those of them that are not able to join us today. So um, real quick, I wanted to introduce myself. Thank you very much for coming today. Uh, my name is Kimberly Miller. I am the Assistant Director for MUDEC, um, which is our Miami campus uh, in Luxembourg. Um, as a background, I am a Miami alum and also a MUDEC alum, so um, I can speak with authority on much of the subject that we're talking here, not just in my role as assistant director, but also as a former student of the program. So I will um, do a, quite a bit of talking um, in the initial stages here, just giving you a, a good overview of what our program is, why it's in Luxembourg, uh, the different options and opportunities that are presented there. And I will certainly open it up to questions at the end. Uh, if you wanna put things in chat and if I can get to them along the way, I will certainly answer them. Otherwise, I will wait till the end of the session to um, tend to any of those questions that you may have. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, if somebody could just give me a, a quick thumbs up or something in chat to know that you can see it, that would be really helpful. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, so here we go. Um, Luxembourg, what an incredible place um, and one that uh, is near and dear to my heart. Um, and it's it's a small country that a lot of people don't know much about, and uh, Miami has had uh, a storied history there for going on 55 years. We are in the midst of our 54th um, and continue to look forward to the future of uh, sending students over to our European campus in the heart of Europe. So one of the mottos that we sort of live by is study, engage, travel, and what the Luxembourg or MUDEC experience provides students is a really broad, in-depth uh, immersion into European life. Uh, they are there first to study. Um, this is an academic um, program. They have to maintain a minimum credit hours. Uh, they will take European uh, focused courses and uh, really um, dive into pertinent curriculum uh, that has extra meaning as it is um, conveyed in Europe. And then students are able to really um, live it and see the art that they're talking about or understand the politics of the region if they're taking, let's say, a political science class. So studying comes number one, um, and it's a really enriching way to go about content in a place like Europe. The engage side is to really uh, push students to become more thoughtful um, students and become a part of the European experience. They can do some internships, they can volunteer, uh, they can uh, participate in a variety of different ways to make their experience not just one for studying and traveling, but to really dive into living and traveling throughout Europe. And then of course the travel component. Um, it, there is no doubt that students that want to go to MUDEC or to other study abroad programs, travel is an important part of that. And it should be because travel can be a really uh, strong positive learning experience. And that bolstered with the uh, material and content that they're learning in the classroom really does bring that travel um, to a, a much deeper level um, to understand European culture and history um, on a um, more in-depth scale than perhaps they would have if they were just traveling for fun. So I'm going to address each of these as we move forward and um, shed a little bit more light on this. So the first question, and if you aren't familiar with our program, uh, you might be thinking like, why Luxembourg? It seems kind of like a, an interesting place to decide to set a college campus. Um, and really the reason why we have a campus in Luxembourg is due to the gentleman on your screen, uh, John Dolloboy. Uh, he has a incredible life story. Um, he is a native Luxembourger, arrived into the United States on 4th of July at Ellis Island, uh, eventually made his way to Ohio. He was a student of Miami University, kind of climbed his way through um, the levels of the university, becoming the vice president of university relations. He served in World War II. He was later a U.S. ambassador to Luxembourg, and uh, he was really a driving force for connecting his 
alma mater, his um, institution, his love of Miami with his home nation of Luxembourg. And so he forged that connection. And then in 1968, we were fortunate enough to open up a campus in Luxembourg. It initially was opened in Luxembourg City, which is the capital of Luxembourg. And about 25 years ago, it moved to the south of the country in what is Differdange, uh, the third largest city of Luxembourg. And so it is a Miami campus, just like we have a campus in Middletown or in Hamilton or in Oxford. Um, it is a Miami campus, which makes it a, a unique situation. Uh, this is not uh, an exchange program. This is not one where we are going through a different university or different providers. It is a Miami campus, Miami tuition, Miami scholarships, Miami faculty and staff. Uh, so it is basically an extension of what we are offering in Oxford. I won't even pretend to try to read Luxembourgish on the screen for you, but the national motto of Luxembourg is we want to remain what we are. They are a very proud people, um, but they have also borrowed a lot of influence from many places throughout Europe. Um, its proximity in the central part of the continent means that it's had a lot of influence uh, from outside nations, obviously France, and Germany border each side of it. So there is a heavy French influence and a heavy German influence. It has Belgium to the north. Um, so it has some of those cultural components there too. Um, Luxembourg can uh, look back well into Roman times for its history, but really the, um, the more popular history or the more recent history of Luxembourg, if we want to call it recent, started in 963. So it has been around for a very, very long time. Uh, it has shrunk in size um, with conquests and land holdings and transfers and wars and, and that sort of thing. But um, it is now um, kind of much, much smaller in size, but it is fiercely proud and fiercely independent um, with a lot of really uh, wonderful history and some somber history as well. Um, it was a crossroads for both World War I and World War II. Uh, you will see military, um, U.S. military cemeteries um, in Luxembourg. Uh, George Patton, famous general, is buried there. Um, the United States helped to liberate uh, Luxembourg. So there is an appreciation for the United States and Americans, as well as our institution, our university, that is bringing in um, young Americans to pump money into the economy, but also to make those connections between Luxembourg and the United States. So it's a very, very good partnership um, and one that we hope to continue for a very long time to come. And so just some quick facts. Not everybody is familiar with Luxembourg and where it's located. It's located right here on this little heart um, nestled between Germany, France, and Belgium. It's uh, approximately 999 square miles. Um, seems kind of mean to not give them the last square mile, but um, that's roughly twice the size of Butler County. Um, you can get to the south of the country all the way to the north of the country in about 45 minutes without traffic. Population is roughly 600,000 people. Um, the good majority of them are actually um, immigrants that have moved due to the finance industry or other large businesses in Luxembourg. So um, Luxembourg is a very a multicultural location. Um, it has not only um, people from the surrounding countries that come in to work, uh, roughly 70% of the people that work in Luxembourg live outside of Luxembourg. They live in France or Belgium or Germany. Um, but we have a lot of Portuguese, um, a lot of uh, countries from the Balkans and uh, the Dutch and, and things like that that have settled into Luxembourg and now call it home. Luxembourg is a really wonderful place to live. It has a uh, very high quality of life, standard of living. Um, it's currently ranked the second richest country in the world. It is extremely safe. So for the parents that are on this call as well, uh, rest assured Luxembourg is one of the most safest countries in the world as well. Um, also as a unique feature, um, it is also the only Grand Duchy in the world. Um, and so the head of state is the Grand Duke um, and the uh, administrative side of the, uh, of the government is handled by a prime minister. So Luxembourg is um, unique, but it also borrows from a lot of cultures. And because we have a lot of immigrants that have moved into Luxembourg for work or travel in there daily for their jobs, um, it has become a very multicultural spot and highly diverse. And because of its proximity, um, it is one of the best and most straightforward options for students that are looking to get 
um, to see Europe. Uh, Luxembourg is um, very accessible to a lot of places throughout Europe. So if you are somebody that is interested in seeing Europe and you don't really know where, you want to see as much as you can and do as much as you can, Luxembourg is probably the best bet for doing that. Um, the proximity of these locations is it really cannot be beat. Um, there are high-speed trains from Luxembourg City to Paris and it takes roughly two hours to get there. You can get to Brussels in three, Frankfurt in four, Amsterdam in five. You can even get to Zurich in six or London in six. Um, you could also take, now they have budget airlines that will fly out of Luxembourg City to pretty much everywhere in Europe for extremely um, cheap prices that would probably uh, you wouldn't believe somewhere in the neighborhood of anywhere from 10 to $40 for a round trip airfare or even a one way. Um, so you are uh, roughly three hours from five different countries. Uh, and that does provide a lot of ability for students to go and experience other cultures um, and to see other places around the world, specifically in Europe, in, um, in a pretty accessible way. So if you are looking to uh, explore Europe and you want to try to, to see as many cultures and uh, places as you can, Luxembourg is a really good um, option for that as, uh, as a study abroad opportunity. So as I mentioned, um, the MUDEC program um, in our Luxembourg campus was originally housed in Luxembourg City, which is the capital. It's sort of in the south central part of of the country. But in the last 25 years, it moved down here to Differdange, which is our third largest city in Luxembourg. It's not very big, um, but it is uh, it is enough to accommodate all of the needs of our campus and our students that live there. Differdange is roughly two kilometers from the French border, so you will predominantly hear French being spoken here, as well as Luxembourgish. Um, but most of the people like in most places in Europe, uh, a lot of them have had quite a bit of uh, English instruction and many of them can speak English very, very well. So uh, while it is wonderful if you can speak French or German or even Luxembourgish, um, if you speak English, um, many of them do too. And that is, uh, it does make it much easier in terms of travel and going to the cafe or going to the grocery store. You'll see on your screen the chateau. And it is a chateau, which is French for castle. Um, it is 15th century, um, and we still have the turrets and the spiral staircases. And um, it is a really beautiful backdrop and a, and a really neat place to have classes. And so this is where students have their classes. And um, kind of neat to be able to say that I took classes in a 15th century castle, which they do. Um, and so it's a, it's a really beautiful space. It has some backyard uh, grounds as well. And I have some pictures here for you as well. Um, what you see in the top here, this is actually um, to the left is kind of our grand hall. It's like the space where students will have their lunches. Um, any large assemblies or lectures might also be in this grand hall. Uh, and just up and over in this balcony area is our library where students can do some studying. Um, they can uh, work on projects and do things collaboratively if they would like. Um, this picture down here in the bottom left is also a, an angle of the library and just kind of over this wall and looking down goes into the Great Hall. So um, it's a really good space for students to uh, work on their schooling in between classes or at the end of the day. This space here in the middle is uh, kind of our lobby area that takes us to the uh, second floor. And then this one on the right is kind of on the second floor looking down into this uh, foyer area. And uh, I was alluding to the, the Great Hall, um, which is the space that you see here in the center. Again, this is where students will have their lunch. It's also a place that if we have guest lectures or events or anything of that nature, they'll also be held in the Great Hall. So it's a really beautiful space, um, obviously super high ceilings, some really um, intricate detailed work on the architecture and the walls. And um, it's a pretty special place for sure. Uh, the basement, which we like to call the cove, um, it's a cave, but we call it the cove because it sounds very fancy, um, but that is the old wine cellar of the chateau that we have converted into a uh, kind of a student space. You'll see here on the screens that we've got some hammocks, some tables and chairs, couches, there's a small kitchen down there. TV, guitars, games. Um, we also have some lockers and vending machines. Um, we also have laundry facilities down there as well. So this is a really good hangout space in between classes or later in the evening uh, that students can 
kind of hang out together and they're not constantly going back and forth from the chateau and they don't really need to. Um, if they want to, they can, but there's also plenty of space to hang out and relax in between classes or to get work done if they need to. So that's a little bit about the, the chateau itself and the backdrop and Luxembourg as a whole. I wanna dive in a little bit into the study component, um, the coursework, the classes and how all of that works. All majors are encouraged to participate. Uh, there certainly are some majors that are going to have um, more options in terms of like major related classes or minor related classes. Um, but there are all of the classes that are offered are Miami plan classes. So whether or not it is a direct um, major or minor requirement, uh, there are global perspectives requirements that are being met. Students can get thematic sequences. Uh, you can get just some general extra course credit for your graduation requirements, humanities, languages. Uh, so there is a lot of options here. So if you are a major that maybe doesn't have as many of those classes represented in Luxembourg, let's say like a biomedical science, for instance, which we hope to have more soon, more space for that. Um, there are still lots of opportunities for students to complete other Miami plan coursework and other graduation requirements. Uh, so it's a really good idea for students to meet with academic advisors before pursuing study abroad, whether it's Luxembourg or anywhere else, to just make sure that the coursework is lining up, that all of the um, courses that you want to take are going to be offered, or that you can save certain coursework for when you're in Luxembourg. So that's a really good idea to meet with academic advisors before beginning to pursue um, applications and, uh, and all of that. So you can take Miami courses and earn Miami credit. You do not have to worry about transfer credit or getting things approved or kind of tracking down anything. Again, this is a Miami campus with Miami classes. It is uh, very straightforward. Um, students will get a time ticket and they will register just like they would for Oxford-based classes. Um, their campus would be changed to Luxembourg. They find the classes they want and they register. Um, and all of that goes immediately onto their transcripts. And again, it is, it's a really turnkey process. All of the classes are taught in English. Um, all of the uh, faculty there speak English very, very well. They are either um, Oxford-based faculty visiting over. Uh, we have some expats that are Americans now living in Europe. And then some of the faculty are European-based faculty, but again, uh, fantastic English. And um, there's no concern for instruction in that regards. Uh, the curriculum is established to allow nearly any and all coursework to fulfill some major or minor or graduation requirements. So I do think um, regardless of your major or minor, um, you will find coursework that is going to get you that much closer to graduation. There is a minimum of 15 credit hours, um, and so all students need to remain above the 15 credit hour threshold throughout uh, the entirety of their semester abroad. We do have a number of different terms that students can apply for. Um, we often do semester long experiences. Um, so students can apply for a fall semester or a spring semester. If you are someone that really wants to dive in and do an entire year, that is an, op an option as well. Not many students do it, but it is certainly uh, available should you want to pursue that. We also have um, shorter length um, summer options. We have what we call a summer base and a summer internship. So I'm gonna explain each of those in brief detail, and then I will proceed talking a little bit more about a semester and what that looks like for coursework. Our summer base program um, is a tuition uh, workshop that is offered in the summertime. It lasts roughly six to seven weeks with travel time on either side, and it incorporates one study tour. I'll talk about study tours a little bit later as well, but essentially a study tour is a five to six day trip with a course where you dive deeper into that content. So if you are learning about film in Europe, for instance, you might go to the heart of Luxembourg film industry, or you might go to Italy um, to discuss and see um, sets and all of that in person. So those study tours are in depth and they go along with whatever content is being taught. Um, and so for our summer based program, again, it's six to seven weeks or so. It's two courses, six credit hours. 
Um, so the cost of that is the cost of the six credit hours, so the tuition cost, plus a program fee, which essentially covers accommodation and some food. Students have um, the ability to travel on the weekends. So uh, this is a really great option for somebody that may not want to spend an entire semester abroad, uh, but they still want to experience Luxembourg and taking classes abroad um, or and to go uh, travel and see a lot of Europe as well. Uh, so costs are listed on the MUDEC website. So if you are interested in the summer based program, you can go onto Miami's website, um, type in MUDEC, M-U-D-E-C, um, which stands for Miami University Dalavoy European Center, if you're wondering where that comes from. And it does break down some costs for you. So you can see that there. Another option for the summer is a summer internship. Uh, global internships are becoming more and more popular and uh, we want to heed that demand. So students are able to travel over to Luxembourg, um, just like the base students. And instead of taking classes, they will participate in an internship. This is considered a zero credit internship uh, or workshop. So they are not paying for tuition and you don't get credit per se uh, for going, um, but you do get experience and obviously internship um, credentials that you can put on resumes and that you can, uh, that will show up on your transcript, but not as a credit hour. Um, so again, this is a fantastic opportunity to get global experience. Um, students apply, uh, they are accepted, and then internship opportunities are provided and students can decide which internships they want to apply for and then we work to place students. Uh, we have been able to successfully place nearly every student that wants an internship uh, so uh, we believe that we can continue to do that as our partnerships grow and our capacity to facilitate those internships grows as well. So for the cost of an internship program in Luxembourg for the summer uh, you're simply paying a program fee which is essentially um, housing and accommodation, as well as um, facilitating that initial internship um, meetup, if you will. Again, prices for that are listed and located on the MUDEC website, so you are welcome to head there as well. In most cases, um, students do have uh, the weekends off where they can travel around Europe as well. Uh, that will Those terms of those internships will need to be established with their, um, their business that they are connected with. Typically, uh, the internship requirement or expectation is 32 hours a week, um, and working with your, your company or that institution, you can determine what that looks like, what days, what hours. Um, but traditionally, summer internship students get that global experience, get that internship, uh, and are still able to travel on the weekends with friends that are in the base program or also other interns. So I wanted to give you the application cycle. Um, we are currently accepting applications for fall and summer. Uh, that is going to go through um, for our programs next year. So again, summer of 2023 and fall of 2023. Um, deadlines for that are December 1st, hopefully with a decision date by middle of December. The intent is that all students will know um, if they are accepted into the program or not uh, by the holidays uh, so that they can make any uh, additional plans that are necessary. There are some minimum eligibility requirements. Uh, disciplinary history um, is checked as well as GPA. So currently there is a 2.5 minimum GPA requirement. Uh, students need to complete an application by the timeline and deadline uh, listed. And aside from that, it is a matter of selection um, and making sure students meet the, the basic requirements and then um, availability and opportunities are provided at that point. So I think I'll pause there for a second. Does anybody have questions about courses? Coursework, registration, classes? You're welcome to put it in chat. Judy, go ahead. Um, sorry, I just joined because for some reason I didn't have a passcode. So I'm just wondering, I want to listen to the beginning of this. How would I access that? Yeah, so I am going to post this link um, through the um, Education Abroad social media, um, and they will have it on our website as well. So okay. um, if you go to MUDEC, there should be a link on there, hopefully by tomorrow. Go on MUDEC, and then that has the, um, it'll show the link for this particular Correct. meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. You're so welcome. 
Um, I have a question about going to see their uh, advisor. Um, and I have, and my daughter is a freshman and she's very interested in studying abroad, um, but she just doesn't know exactly where or with what program. Um, so when should, how soon should she make an appointment to speak with her advisor? Yeah, so there, that's, that's a great question. There are two different advisors that I would suggest that she meet. The first one should be an academic advisor. Um, our department in education abroad, we, do, we are not an academic division. So I think first and foremost, she needs to speak with an academic advisor to determine her coursework, um, her timeline. Uh, some majors are more restrictive than others of when students can go. Um, so I think that's step number one. Step number two, if she is unsure uh, which study abroad option she wants to pursue, we do have have education abroad advisors as well. Uh, so she can come into McMillan Hall. We have drop-in hours Monday through Wednesday, two to four. Uh, she can also schedule appointments in advance and speak with an advisor to talk about the other options, not just Luxembourg, um, and then decide from there. So those are the two resources that I would point her to. Um, but typically speaking, um, about a year out is when you really want to start um, moving forward. Um, applications for Luxembourg specifically, um, again, they're open for fall and for summer with a deadline of December 1st. Spring 2024 will be open um, early in the new year and then will close May 1st. So that's sort of the application cycle for Luxembourg, um, but different programs have different um, enrollment dates and different uh, deadlines as well. So she would need to look um, you know, each one specifically. Uh, but typically this process, I would say, starts roughly a year out, going through meeting with the various advisors, applying, waiting for the acceptance, and then going through orientation before departing. Okay. Okay. Some other quick questions I saw, um, are there any J term options? There are. Um, those are not directly through the MUDEC program. They kind of use MUDEC as a a launching pad to facilitate other programs. So if you would like to go to Luxembourg and you would like to see the Chateau and take classes there, you can absolutely do that. Um, and you can look at those different options by going to the search feature on education abroad. So if you go to the education abroad page at Miami, at the top of the screen, it says search programs and you can do it that way too. So again, there are some that use Luxembourg um, as sort of a, a a hub, if you will, and then they kind of move outward. Um, but in the context of a Miami MUDEC program, um, like the ones I'm mentioning, those are slightly separate. So Jackie, I hope that answers your question. Is there any credit for those or no? Yes, yes, there are. And um, they vary. Uh, so some of them may be three credit hours, some are six. It just depends on the program. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so acceptance rates, um, this has changed a little bit as of late. Um, I think we are experiencing some, some built up demand after the COVID kind of lockdowns and shutdowns um, and disrupting students um, kind of timelines of events. So we are seeing a lot of students applying um, more than we've had capacity to fill. So in the past, um, if you wanted to go and you met the requirements, then you were typically able to find a spot. Um, in the last year or so, um, with things opening back up, people becoming a little bit more um, open to traveling again, um, we are seeing an uptick in demand and we are still limited by the amount of space that we can hold for students. That being said, the vast majority of students that apply do get in um, and we are actually opening up additional housing opportunities in the fall of 2023. Uh, so I, I think that we are going to be able to see a higher acceptance rate because of that as well. So it's hard to say because you never know how many students are going to apply, um, but there are limitations from time to time, but hopefully that will be alleviated by more housing opportunities. Are students accepted on a rolling basis or do they all find out in December? Um, we have changed to this recently um, because of this newfound demand uh, that I was just mentioning. Um, we were seeing that students were applying 
in mass very early on and we were accepting them as they came in and then we were full and that still left months uh, of the application cycle open and students that were really good quality candidates that really wanted to go um, were not able to get in because of um, the fact that we filled up our slots earlier. Um, so we have transitioned away from rolling admission to um, set deadlines where all applications can be evaluated at the same time and then um, spots offered to as many students as we can possibly facilitate that have met those requirements. Are there a lot of psych classes available? Um, they're not necessarily psych classes. Um, there are a lot of arts and sciences classes uh, that we do have available. I will say that there are a lot of psychology majors that do go to Luxembourg. It's one of the more popular um, majors that goes. So this may be one of those situations, as I was kind of talking about before, uh, where you might not find major and minor requirements where you're ticking off these boxes, but you're getting a lot of other requirements that you need to have um, for your graduation requirements taken care of while you're in Luxembourg. Uh, students can get their thematic sequence done there very, very easily as well um, if you go for a semester. So um, hopefully that answers your question, Haley. Um, also, uh, where can you apply? Um, on the MUDEC webpage. So again, if you go to Miami's uh, homepage and you just type in MUDEC, M-U-D-E-C, it'll take you to the MUDEC webpage. At the top, there's a button that says apply. So the application process is fairly straightforward. Um, it's a series of questions, nothing um, you know, super difficult or drawn out. So um, I think that you could complete an application in less than an hour. Okay, any other questions before I head on? Uh, freshmen do not have an established GPA yet, so how can that be assessed? Um, that's actually a really good question. Um, the, by the time that they apply um, and we go through the cycle, we will have some data to pull from um, because again, this is almost a year long process from application through acceptance, through departure. So um, we've sent students that have applied their freshman year and have had data to pull. So we should be okay. Because even if they're a freshman, let's say that they're a fall freshman right now, if they applied for the December 1st deadline, um, if we needed to, we could hold off and wait for those grades to calculate a week or two later, and we can pull from that. If you have any more questions, feel free. You're welcome to put that in chat. Um, I will move on and talk about the engage portion of things. Uh, feel free to continue to ask questions as we go. So on the engage side, um, one of the most enriching parts of study abroad is to immerse yourself in the culture of your destination, wherever that may be. Um, and one of the ways that we do that in our MUDEC program is through homestays. Uh, homestays is a host family. It's basically um, an opportunity for students to live with a European family and to um, stay with them. And what this does is it promotes immersion, it promotes cultural exchange. Um, it's a great opportunity for students to have a support system that's sort of built in because this host family is sort of looking after the students to make sure that they have a warm bed and they have access to a safe and secure home. Um, and if anything, you know, the student needed assistance with anything, you have a, a host family there that's looking after them. So the homestays are, a really lovely way for students to have that support system to still be independent um, because they are not monitored like um, you know young children they are adults and the homestays treat them like that um, but they also are there to assist them should they need anything and so homestays are a really wonderful component of our MUDEC program students are able to room with friends if they want um, we have a housing questionnaire that students fill out that gives um, a lot of questions and students can provide a lot of details. They can request certain host families if they had siblings or friends that have stayed abroad. Uh, they can request friends to live with. And so uh, we really do try to make sure that every housing arrangement is conducive for the student and for the host family. And we have had wonderful success with our host families over the years. They are highly vetted. There's um, they're safe. They've been around for uh, many of them for a long time. 
Um, I stayed with a host family during my stay and I wouldn't have changed it for anything. I really did feel like I gained a lot from that experience. I felt um, like a local um, when you are living in a home and walking to the grocery store and using public transportation, you do feel uh, more immersed in that culture. So homestays are a really, um, really great opportunity for, for students to um, expound on their experience. We do have some apartment options as well. Uh, there are new apartment facilities that are being built. So I just mentioned that uh, come fall 2023 that we should be able to facilitate even more students because we have more apartment options. Uh, we currently only have roughly 10 uh, studio apartments that are available for the 110, 120 students that are going over there. Um, but by next year, we should have uh, quite a few more than that and uh, be able to uh, find housing for more students that are interested in going to Luxembourg. Um, again, determining who stays in an apartment versus a homestay, a lot of that is contingent upon the responses that students provide in their housing questionnaire. Some students want the apartment option. It's, um, it's independent. Uh, it's uh, a, a kind of a unique living situation to be able to travel over to Europe and have your own apartment. So some really like that option where others want that, uh, that support system of a host family and to, to live in a home and live with others as opposed to being on their own. Uh, so those are um, mainly the two, the two types of options that we have. Meals are provided. Um, if students are staying with host families, they are provided a continental breakfast. This varies family by family, but they are provided you know, cereal, fruit, yogurt, granola, um, things like that for their morning breakfast. Uh, we do have a French chef that cooks for the students in the Chateau Monday through Thursday. Um, the food is really good actually, and it's large portions. And so students um, get lunch provided to them during the week. And honestly, a lot of students um, have very small dinners. They'll go back to their host family. They'll go to their kitchenette in their, um, in their apartment and just make something small, a small salad or a sandwich, uh, because the lunches are, are the main meal of the day in Europe and uh, probably had a large one at lunch. And so they don't need as big of a one at dinner. So there are um, plenty of grocery stores, cafes, uh, all of that, no matter where they live. Um, there is a uh, grocery store less than five minutes away from the Chateau as well. So uh, they have plenty of access to lots of food and food options during their stay. There are other opportunities for students to engage on a bit deeper level. Um, I talked about internships at the summer, um, but we also have internships during the semester. They take roughly eight to nine hours a week. Um, we set up an internship for students, some um, within our chateau walls that might be assisting Miami based endeavors. And then we also have internships with outside companies that we can link students with as well. They can gain up to three credit hours for doing that. Um, and again, it takes roughly eight to nine hours a week, which is standard for most coursework. In some situations, uh, students can volunteer. Um, we have quite a few um, NGOs, nonprofits, uh, um, daycares, and things that uh, students may want to, to do to obviously put on a resume, but also to enrich their experience while they're in Europe. Um, and so these are a really wonderful way to, to get an even bigger experience out of their time abroad. And for the internships, uh, they can gain course credit. Of course, volunteering um, comes with the altruistic nature of, of just doing it because the students would like to. We do have ways that students can get involved, one of which is through something called the Student Faculty Council. This is um, headed up by leaders within the Chateau, so some students as well as some faculty members that will deal with any potential issues that they see coming up, um, engage in community outreach, or plan kind of fun social events as well. So the Student Faculty Council is a great way for students to exercise some leadership roles if that is something that they're interested in doing. Uh, we also organize things called Knowledge Bites, which are really fun kind of um, like uh, discussions and presentations in the evening about initiatives or like a really cool project that's going on in the city or um, somebody coming in and talking about, um, you know, the way they recycle in Europe, which is you know, very complex and interesting in terms of, uh, of how they do that and sustainability, for instance. We also have uh, director's lectures, um, which are organized um, by our team to bring in some really uh, 
really good guests. Um, we've had some World War II vets. We have had diplomats. We have had uh, businessmen and women. Um, so those directors' lectures are really uh, cool opportunities to uh, dive into um, some sort of discussions that are, uh, you know, based on a particular area or a topic or something along those lines. There are also events that are held. Um, they'll do s'more night or karaoke night or field day or things like that to keep students just enjoying their experience. Um, there is a lot of work to be done in the four or five days that they're taking their courses. Those classes are stretched throughout the day. A lot of students will come to the Chateau and stay at the Chateau most of the day, Monday through Thursday. Um, and so it's nice to have these events some, occasionally at night uh, where they can all get together, go to a movie or you know, make s'mores or something like that. So questions on engage. So Martha, I see your question, where can you find the different study abroad programs? Um, so on the education abroad website, if you just go to Miami's website in the search function type in education abroad. There is a search tool at the top that says search for all programs. You can um, you know, filter it out to location, time frame, courses, that sort of thing. So that will help you filter it. If you're looking for more information after this on MUDEC and Luxembourg as a whole, breaking down the summer versus semester, um, there is the MUDEC website, M-U-D-E-C, that you can also search for. Thank and you. You are welcome. Any other engaged questions? Okay. As exciting as it is, travel is a really exciting part too. And I think a lot of you are, are interested to hear how students are able to travel while also studying. Um, again, the study component is why we're here. It's the most important element. But what makes it a big bonus is to be able to travel on the weekends and to see Europe and to see these cultures with your own two eyes. Um, so one way that students can do it is through discovery tours. These discovery tours are amazing. Uh, they are free to students. Um, it is paid for through the generous donations of our MUDEC alumni. Um, they wanted to extend more opportunities to more students. So they have actively donated year after year to start up these discovery tours, which are essentially half day or full day, sometimes uh, overnight trips to various destinations that are sometimes off the beaten track, not super far away, um, but far enough and interesting enough to keep students' interests. Um, they will go to... Um, a hiking area in the northern part of Luxembourg. Um, they will go to Maastricht in the Netherlands and look at the business side of things there. They may go to uh, the Champagne region in France and do a champagne tasting. One of the overnights, they went to the beaches of Normandy um, and looked at you know, World War II um, locations as well as some other cultural elements. So discovery tours are great if you are um, interested in going to Luxembourg, um, but you are on a budget, it still can be done. You can do discovery tours uh, consistently and see a ton of stuff and not pay for it. So just know that it can be done um, through the generous donations of our MUDEC alumni, paying it forward to the next, uh, the next batch of students. We also have something unique to MUDEC, which we call study tours. Um, these are awesome. Um, and so I talked about it before with the summer uh, base program. In those six weeks, there is one um, study tour that students will go on. If you are in a semester long course, uh, work with MUDEC, um, you will select one of usually four study tour courses. It might focus on sociology or history or a language or linguistics or film or, or something like that. Um, you will engage in that content throughout the course of the semester, and then at one point during the semester, the, all of the students in that class, roughly 30 to 35 students, will go on a, an extended field trip, essentially, um, and the MUDEC staff does a fantastic job of putting together really compelling um, activities, um, speeches, and uh, walking tours, um, things like that. And so it's organized by Miami. It is paid for um, through 
budgeting and the dollars that go for tuition. So it's no additional cost for students. Accommodations are taken care of, food's taken care of, and they really dive a bit deeper into the content. Um, Students can also use it as a launching pad to go on and visit other places. So as a frame of reference, um, my study tour location was London. Uh, we talked about romanticism in literature, um, talking about like um, the, the, the whole genre of like the 17 and 1800s. Um, and so our uh, study tour went to London. We went to various museums. We saw different um, architecture that encapsulated the uh, romanticism movement. Um, and got to see a play, and it was just a really incredible experience. Uh, we were then able to, because it butted up next to a weekend, my friends and I went up to Scotland for three days to, to see Scotland, and that might have been something that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise, because our study tour got us most of the way um, and really helped us see an incredible city like London, going to places and doing things that probably we wouldn't have done on our own or known to do, or maybe even chosen to do, but it was such a wonderful experience that we learned a lot from. And so these study tours are a, a definite high point um, in the student experience. And of course, students have the opportunity to independently travel. Um, if they choose to, um, they can schedule themselves to have three-day weekends. Uh, some coursework and some students choose to work uh, and go the full five days during the week. That is wonderful too. Um, and so students will often leave after their classes conclude uh, for the week and they will be off and go and see whatever it is that they wanna see that weekend. Um, because of Luxembourg's uh, location, they're able to go to a lot of places in a very short um, period of time. So during my stint in Luxembourg, I was able to go to 18 countries in four months. Um, and to really see quite a bit, actually, and do a lot of really um, um, immersive type travel, not just take the picture and move on, uh, which was wonderful. And so some of you might be kind of thinking, wow, like, what is the cost here? This seems like a lot. Well, again, this is a Miami campus. Um, so the cost is virtually the same as it is in Oxford. Um, on the MUDEC website, we do have a price breakdown. Um, and a cost estimate, so you can look at that. But generally speaking, tuition is the same. Um, room and board is going to be roughly the same cost as what we are spending in Luxembourg. So um, if you make the side-by-side -side comparison, ultimately the only extra expense that you're starting to incur is going to be independent travel costs. So the flight over and flight back, as well as the monthly and weekly travel that students are taking and some additional food costs uh, for evenings and weekends. But um, again, you can travel as inexpensively as you would like to in Europe by being thoughtful of where you spend your money, taking discovery tours, or if you wanna spend a lot of money, you can do that too. So um, budgeting for travel is kind of on an individual basis um, and what works for each student. But in terms of the schooling, the academics, the room and board, um, that is very, very comparable, if not almost identical to what a student would expect in Oxford. And so I'm going to open this up for questions. Um, I do see a question, how do you find out what topics or locations are available for study tours? Uh, those will be posted on the MUDEC website again um, for the, uh, the specific term. Uh, so fall is not open yet um, in terms of those courses, but it will be before students uh, register. Um, right now, our spring students uh, haven't registered yet, but the study tours have been established. So we have a history class um, that focuses on World War II. It's going to Poland. And um, we have a sociology class that deals with sustainability and in regionalism is going to Slovenia. We have a medieval Europe class that is going to the south of France. And we have a linguistics or a languages in Europe type course that's going to Ireland. So they do go to really uh, wonderful places that are spread out, that are unique, and that further enrich the content of that course. Are current Miami scholarships available to use too? Yes, and that's what makes it also a really good financially viable option. Um, if you are receiving any kind of financial aid, financial scholarships, um, that can be applied to MUDEC um, because it's the same sort of uh, payment uh, system as you would be doing here. 
I, let me make sure I'm catching up with some of these questions. Are there special healthcare coverage requirements? Yes. So students must remain on um, their provider, their health insurance provider, whether that's through Miami or on a, um, you know, on a family plan that they are a part of. And then students also need to purchase a um, Geo Blue, which is a supplemental insurance that will cover for any extenuating circumstances, um, obviously anything related to COVID. Um, but if a student, you know, has to go to the doctor, or the dentist, or ends up you know, the broken foot in the hospital. Um, there is this supplemental coverage that will assist students in that situation too. Um, and so that is a requirement for students to purchase. It's a fairly nominal fee. Um, I think it's roughly 20 bucks a week, but yes, they are expected to purchase that as well. Are the same general courses offered each semester? So a student can determine if they can fit those courses into their graduation major and requirements. Or, um, so the offerings change each semester or school year. Uh, the summer base program, so if you're looking at summer, that will change every single year. So you will not see duplicates for summer because we bring over different faculty every year with different areas of expertise. Um, so summer will definitely change every year. Um, in terms of semester long programs, most of the coursework will be pretty standard and pretty similar. Uh, the study tour courses will likely change. Um, at least two of the four will likely change. Um, and we may alter some of the curriculum um, year to year or semester to semester. For instance, architecture majors, um, kinesiology majors, uh, we tend to encourage them to go in the fall um, because that's when we make those offerings. Uh, sports leadership and management, tend to encourage them to go in the springtime because that's when those classes are offered. And so students with those majors will already know about these opportunities and these cohorts that are nestled within our program. And so that will be a, a natural fit to go during those time periods. But if you are a student um, of, let's say you're a history major, for instance, um, you can look at the offerings for spring 2023 and expect it to be fairly similar for spring 2024 with some adjustment. Not everything is copy and paste, but the majority of those classes will be fairly similar year to year. And of course, we are always reevaluating our curriculum, um, trying to keep up with student interest, student demand, major requirements, and that kind of thing too. So um, yes, hopefully that answered your question. Anything else that I can answer for you all? Okay, well, I will leave it here. If you have any specific questions or you want to stick around, I will hang out for a few more minutes. Otherwise, I wish you the very best. You are more than welcome to send me an email and schedule a one on one if you have additional questions concerning Luxembourg. Um, I hope all students that are interested in studying abroad find some place to go, uh, whether it's Luxembourg or somewhere else in the world. So wishing you all the very best of luck and safe travels. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you. I will have this, um, this link will be posted on the MUDEC website, hopefully by tomorrow. So um, you'll want to take a peek there and hopefully it'll be pretty accessible for you to find. Um, one quick question. Are there any vaccination requirements before students yes. have to leave? Yes. So this is, this is a tricky one, um, as you know, uh, because vaccination requirements change constantly. Um, and so what I tell you today on September 9th is very likely to change within a couple of weeks. Um, and they do change fairly readily. Um, currently, there is an expectation that students um, should be fully vaccinated, meaning two shots of either Pfizer or Moderna or one J&J &J shot with a booster shot. Um, again, this could very easily change. They may require more, they may take off the requirements. Um, so if students are fully vaccinated, it makes it much, much easier to travel around Europe because they still do have a number of restrictions for travelers. So there's no other, besides the COVID, are there other certain country vaccinations that would be um, no, required? No, um, not really, okay. no. So it's not like if you were traveling to a tropical area that needed like malaria, for instance, um, or anything like that. So nope. Um, COVID seems to be the, the big sticking point for a lot of the European, the EU countries. So um, that's the biggie. But other than that, there are not other requirements. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, I'm going to stop uh, the recording, but if you are still around and you have questions, feel free to let me know.